and welcome to Tarmac, or maybe I should just say howdy partners. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew, and as you can see from the truck behind us today, we're feeling quite small, and that's because the truck in question is a new Chevrolet Silverado Z71 LT. That's right, it's big, it's red like a fire truck, and <laughs> boy, it's impressive. Come, let's take a look around this. Okay, let me get something out of the way straight away. This for New Zealand is the 2022 model, but the Americans would have a, probably an upgrade, updated model that has different a different fascia and stuff like that. But what we do is we get the this model from Australia. Basically, it's converted into a right-hand drive, and then we get it from there. So we're slightly behind, but it is a right-hand drive Silverado, and um, this is what we get. We actually get two models. We get this, which is the Trail Boss, and also there is a more upmarket version, which is the LTZ, which has got more leather, but we'll go into that in a minute. The other thing to get out, <laughs> out of the way up front is the sheer size of it. Look, it's six meters in length. It's two meters wide and two meters tall. I mean, it's massive. And just look at the look at the oppressiveness of this front it's or impressiveness depends which way you look at it it really is massive and although it does look about as aerodynamic as a brick what uh, what they've done is this is the most aerodynamic Silverado out there it spent 500 hours in a wind tunnel just making sure that there's more airflow here more I was going to say it slips through the air but it doesn't really slip through the air it just sort of moves the air aside which is fine and the rest of it, look at this nice big Chevrolet badging and just Z71 and just, oh, it's just enormous. I love it. Looking around the side, <laughs> look at this. I just love it. The length, the width, as I said, it's massive. Off the off road, of basically it's off road height is uh, 260 millimeters. So it's actually quite tall there. Looking around the front, it's got a 30, 30 degree approach angle and a 23 degree departure angle, which is quite good. So rest assured, this does go off road very well. 18 inch wheels and these nice solid off road all terrain Goodyear tires from there. It's got an independent front suspension and a live rear suspension. So it really is, it's ready to tackle any of this stuff that's around here, actually, whatever you want. And also for shorties like me, <laughs> there's this lovely running board to get up there and get in, which is cool. This one also comes with this rear bar, sports bar here, which is an accessory as well as the front guard thing. But look at it. It's just, it says trail boss and this will boss any trail. Okay, so it's a truck. So therefore there's, you know, it's going to have a flat deck and all that sort of stuff, which I'll get to in a minute. A couple of things to really hi highlight around here is obviously the embossed Chevrolet uh, badging or writing here, Silverado. These steps here are really cool, which is, uh, you know, for me, I can actually get inside, which is great. The other good thing on the key fob, you can start it. And also as an industry first, you can actually open this. How cool is that? And that opens up to 178 cubic meters of, I don't know, cavernous space to fit whatever you want inside. <laughs> Speaking of things that are big and hefty, let's take a look under the bonnet. Now, regular viewers would already know that I'm normally leaning into a uh, bonnet and looking into and telling you all the specs. But realistically, I'm on tiptoes and just hanging on here. That's how tall it is. Anyway. In here is a 6.2 litre Ecotec 3. So that's the engine, it's a V8. Uh, I'll get to the economy in a minute. It's 313 kilowatts of power and 640 newton meters of torque that really goes to the two or four wheels. So there's plenty going on. And when I say Ecotec, <coughs> And when I say Ecotech, what I'm saying is that it actually has a very smart system that can shut down some of the cylinders and uh, turn it into a four cylinder when needs be. And also it sort of, well, it reports to 12 liters per 100, 12.7 uh, liters per, per 100 kilometers as far as economy. <coughs> as far as economy goes but you know that's not bad the other thing it's got a 91 litre um, petrol uh, petrol tank which basically means that to fill it up here at three dollars a litre is about 300 bucks so you better get your wallet out or be ready to push it 
Oh, speaking of things that are not very efficient, Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there. Oh. So even though Dave might say I'm not very efficient, well, in most cars, space-wise, you know, I'm, I take up a regular size person's space, but in this car, I'm just... I'm just a dwarf. I mean, just look at the space around me, like how far away you are from me. It's just, just incredible. And the size of everything, the doors, the door cubbies, like everything's American sized. And if you look around, well, you've got storage space there, there. The door cubbies are huge. You've got space for a phone here. You've got space for a phone there, space for two coffee cups here and probably a, a billion more all over the place. There's like almost in a cooler box size bin over here and just like the vastness of everything is just hard to comprehend but you know the size of the car in general is hard to comprehend but hopefully we've given you a bit of a, a reference in terms of size there anyway the cabin of this silverado well it comes down to australia where it's transferred over to right hand drive so there are a few panel gaps here and there but overall it's basically what you'd expect the American version to be like. So you have some scratchy plastics around, a little bit of faux leather material. The seats, well, they're nice and comfortable, um, fabric covered as well. So they can stand the test of off-road and getting dirty and stuff like that. And you don't feel too guilty about getting mud into this car because it's quite easy to clean. So in that sense, it is a proper trail boss. In the middle here, well, you've got a storage space at the top there. And you've got your controls for the infotainment screen here, air conditioning controls here separately. And then you've got all these sort of pilot style switches over here for the parking sensors, the electronic tailgate as Dave showed you, hill descent control as well, and a few more charging points here and there. And this strange looking thing here actually is something to control the trailers braking. So it's really built with off-road and towing in mind. So it can prove the figures that it's got on paper. Something else that's really intelligent about the Silverado is the infotainment screen. So let's take a quick look at that. So the infotainment screen over here, well, this is the home screen and it has your media source and phone connectivity. And it's also got things like the temperature and time and stuff like that, all the necessities basically. It's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it'll keep you connected there just fine. And if you swipe through, you get a few more options um, in terms of the camera, so it's got front and rear parking sensors as well. It's got tra um, settings for your trailer. And then it's also got some smarter safety technology like lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, and all the sort of stuff that you'll really need in a, a truck of this size and things that's really helpful. If the screen does look a little bit old, well, that's because in New Zealand we have the slightly older model, but it is uh, updated for the 2022 American Silverado. So the steering wheel here is leather wrapped and feels nice and large to hold for a, a car of this size. You've also got shortcut buttons on the front here and actually shortcut buttons on the back here. Now, if you're wondering what this big thing here is, well, actually this is the column shifter. So it activates that 10 speed automatic gearbox and you basically pull it towards you and then pull it down. So that's drive now. And once you've done that, well, you've got a few more settings to play with when you're in drive mode. So firstly, this dial over here activates trailer mode and all the, the different modes, basically sport, off-road, normal, you know, the kind of stuff that you'll go through with your regular driving. You also have this set of buttons here, which is controlling the four-wheel drive system. So you can either have it in two-wheel drive, rear, or four-wheel drive, or low range, and like all that controls are over here. Below that, there's a few more controls for lights and things, but none of the really off-roady stuff over here. And then hopping over to the instrument cluster. Well, that's got about six different gauges and your know, oil pressure and temperature and battery voltage. And it's like a classic American style dashboard. And it looks really nice. Just that white and black and red needles. Nicely laid out, simple, and there's plenty of of go on the rev counter as well as you can imagine as i said that rev counter shows the car has plenty of power as you know and the only way to test that is to take it for a drive so the new chevrolet silverado 
Z71LT Trail Boss. Well, that's quite a handful and a long name too because of course this is a, a big handful this truck and very long too. Actually, it's funny, I can't say Silverado without sort of singing Silverado. It's like an old Western somewhere, and I'm sure the name means something along those lines. But it, it is it is a big beast and completely or very, very impractical for New Zealand roads. But who cares? Really, who cares? Yeah, I was just going over a checklist of uh, with Dave earlier of things that might be troublesome in New Zealand. So parking spaces, garages, um, oh well drive throughs yeah, yep. uh, yeah, parking malls, just basically everywhere is impractical. But then you just, <laughs> you put it into drive and put your foot down and just hear that V8 roar and make tons of noise. And ah, you just forget about everything to do with impracticality. And then you have all these, so utes or pickup trucks that are really popular in New Zealand. And you have all these little things um, driving around and then you come face to face with them in this and this is really a truck that's not a truck anymore it's definitely not face to face you're just looking down on these people <laughs> small little trucks yeah a crocodile dundee would be happy that's not a truck this is a truck it makes makes everything else look like tonka trucks to be honest um even though we said that this is you know impractical for new zealand it's not actually an impractical car by itself i mean it's got, you know, so many storage spaces and of course because it is American there's a few secret cubbies in the back there for things that may or may not rhyme with guns. <laughs> and it's also got that massive truck bed and it's got 4.2 tons of towing. So actually if you look at it holistically, it's pretty practical. Yeah, you're right. Those little secret places in the seats are awesome. They're really good. I I don't know what I would put there. I put my, my American uh, food there, my, my baby roofs and stuff like that for a, for a stash. It could be great. <laughs> And, and, and as far as New Zealand wise, it, it, I mean, it actually navigates really nicely. It's it, it, the turning circle is obviously massive, and but it seems to sort of breathe in, or maybe it's me breathing in as we're going through things. But it's, I mean, it actually drives nicely. And when you start heading off road into areas, I mean, New Zealand's very unpaved, and actually even its paved roads are pretty un, unkempt. So it, it fits in nicely. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with those off-road tires that this particular model has, um, it likes these gravel roads and it likes a little bit of slip. And there's a definitely a, an air of playfulness to this car. And, you know, the V8 and the Trail Boss badging and all that stuff, while it has serious credentials behind there, it also likes to have a bit of fun. Yeah, and uh, on the main road, the tires do, these tires do give off a, a fair amount of road noise, but uh, just put your foot down and listen to the V8. You won't really care. The other thing is that when you do just let it run, I mean, this will sit 100 kilometers per hour at just over a thousand revs all day on the motorway. So although you are scared when you're filling up the uh, petrol pump for probably a day to fill it up and everything, it just will be sort of economical, you know. And I mean, Dave said earlier that the, the fuel efficiency figure is like, 13 liters or something per 100 yeah, kilometers seven, yep. and remember that this has got a 6.2 liter v8 in the front it's a massive truck that's more than two tons in weight two so, and a half yeah exactly so when you consider that it's not actually all that bad then comes down the question of comfort and really the suspension the i love it rancho shocks how cool is that these are sort of a, a very american shocks but anyway that it's smooth it's a smooth ride uh, visibility is great i would have personally liked a little bit more support on the on the side bolsters if i was going to go off road properly but you know i guess comfort you can probably just make sure you got your big gulp and and away you go but it's it's awesome it's just soft and the the independent rear the it's just nice just really just such a nice smooth ride and it sits on the road just nicely now we're on a normal new zealand highway essentially a rural highway and like there's nothing coming through the cabin here it just soaks it all up and of course there's different modes as well that you you can play with if you do want to 
be more sporty or more economical or you know have a softer ride etc so there's plenty of customization there as well you've got to have a special need for this sort of vehicle though um you the the towing rating you know you've got to want to have a big boat behind you at 4.2 tons of towing if this is not your general commute in and out of town size vehicle that that's going to snugly put into a downtown car park or anything like that this is something that really has a sense of purpose and you know what a purpose it is yeah if you're going into a downtown basically you have to do a bit of planning ahead if you want to take this into that city area for sure and even things like u-turns and stuff all need a bit of a bit of foresight yeah and also if you do want something that's even bigger than this there's a silverado 2500 which actually makes this look dwarfed <laughs> i don't know i <laughs> that's a that's a mountain on wheels So there you have it, the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado. I mean, it's big, it's a monster. I mean, in this red, it's like a monstrous fire truck, but uh, <laughs> you can't help but love it with its size and its just overall capabilities. Uh, look, look at this smile on my face, I love it. It's uh, just awesome. It doesn't really fit on my driveway, but I, I think I'd rather move for it. Actually, it's that good. Oh, what, what Dave forgot was the LT Z71 Trail Boss bit. But what you definitely won't be forgetting is the size and the power of this truck. It's just unmistakably Chevy. I love it. Hopefully we'll get the uh, the new Cam uh, Camaro or, or Corvette. I don't know. Excellent. Thanks for watching. There's plenty more to come. And it's all in the back there. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to Tarmac Life. It'll be somewhere around here. <laughs> See ya.